Hey everyone, welcome to this Learn the Tech show. This is show number eight, and we are March 8, 2016. And today is a little special. Today, the Learn the Tech show is going to be about how it all began. And uh, how it all began is a bit of my story. Uh, when I started, and how come I'm here doing stuff like that? Uh, we're going to learn a lot of things about um, the today's, you know, about me. And uh, so uh, I hope that uh, you guys enjoy it. Sorry, I wasn't watching that. So uh, there's a little something about the show today. It's exceptional, but today I will accept. Uh, questions through help with your computers at gmail.com so if you have a question about me about my life in technology and everything uh, today is special I'm going to answer your questions and so we're going to start with the beginning the real beginning so uh, don't hesitate to send me your questions help with your computers at gmail.com so it all began somehow, I guess. You know, a tech guy doesn't become a tech guy because of faith, necessarily. So here we go. Uh, tech guy became a tech guy because, first of all, it starts with this. I mean, uh, I was always fascinated with electronics and I mean as small and as little as I was in my life I always wanted to learn more about how these things work I would open everything I see I would open all the electronic stuff I got every time I would get a game I would get something I'd be uh, you know just um, basically uh, opening it up seeing what's happening inside and how it works so uh, basically starts with an interest in electronics that's for sure I can tell you that um, I started you know playing with little parts there's a electronics store called Addison that's really near where I live and that's where it all began you know I would go there and for me, that was just fantastic. There was tons and tons of electronic little gizmos and parts, and I just have a lot of fun with that. So uh, it starts with an interest in electronics in general. Um, you know, I'm amazed at how things work. I'm amazed at how a TV set works. I'm amazed at how everything works. Uh, and, you know, that's the way it is with my curiosity. And I would say that even though it's not as strong it's still there I'm still the curious guy that wants to see how it works inside and uh, so um, you know I still love to to watch you know uh, if I have the choice of buying a maybe a computer that's totally uh, you know transparent in glass or something or plastic transparent plastic just because I see the insides I just love it I love to see the circuit board I love to see the parts you know what what most people don't want to see basically <laughs> so um, it starts with that you know slowly but surely and uh, as I get you know a little older first real love of my life I would say is uh, shortwave radio shortwave radio is kind of um, a starting point of an in a, a major interest uh, of all sorts of electronic gizmos so I get myself uh, of course and that's a very modern uh, shortwave radio but I have uh, and I still have today a uh, multiband radio my dad buys multiband radios we listen you know I listen to all sorts of stuff and I'm just wow so happy I listen to the local uh, you know airplanes and all of that so uh, you know it's cool and then I stumbled about something that's called shortwave and I'm not sure what it is because it says SW1 SW2 on the radio and I come across 
I start listening and I hear this is the BBC from London and I'm just amazed because I'm like what you know I'm in Canada and there's a London Ontario and it's probably a London in every province anyways so I'm like what London Ontario no it's London in England and that sparks an, an immense curiosity suddenly I'm hearing something from another continent okay how can that be with a little radio a cheap little radio with a little telescopic antenna on top and you know it continues on so shortwave my first technological love I would say that involves electronics I'm amazed I'm amazed at listening to the world and I find that just fantastic and for some of you because some of you do know I have a shortwave channel on YouTube where I talk about shortwave because it's still something that I love doing today. So I do these, you know, shortwave radio uh, videos and uh, I have live shows on the shortwave channel also. So, you know, that starts slowly like that. But the real interest came one day when my dad brought home a little something that resembles this a Commodore VIC-20 computer. Yep, I start with a Commodore VIC-20 computer. And basically, I'm just so, so, uh, you know, amazed at what it does. It comes with a little piece of, uh, a little book, comes with a book, and that book is uh, like 20 programs for the Commodore VIC-20. So I'm like, oh, wow, okay. 20 programs for the Commodore VIC-20. Let's, let's take a look at that and see, you know, because I'm not sure. And at first, we plug, it's plugged in on the TV and I'm looking at it and it's like, hmm, okay. So uh, first game that I do is uh, kind of a slalom game, but, it, you know, it's very basic because you got to remember this is, we're in 1982, okay, about 1982 and uh, 1983 maybe. And these machines are not very powerful, you know, but uh, the Commodore VIC-20 is what started all my passion for computers. So basically I have Commodore VIC-20, I have a little tape drive like this where I can save programs on a tape drive. We've got a, a TV because back then computers plug on a TV. They don't have a monitor or a screen of their own. They're on a TV and uh, the little First game that I do, of course, with tons of errors because you have to program these, you know, lines of basic. And I, you know, of course, do some of the things wrong. So when I run it, it gives me an error message and doesn't want to work. So I have to go back and look at it again. And suddenly after, you know, maybe three hours of tweaking, there it is. A little game where you get like a slalom skiing. And I mean, very basic. The edges of the ski or the uh the, the edge of the uh of, of where you ski is made with the letter i so it's moving randomly on the screen like this and you are represented by an asterisk because there's no graphics in that game it's we use the letters and they represent something and with the keyboard i go left and right and you have to just not touch the edge in that slalom game. And I mean, I play all evening. I play all evening with it. And I'm just so amazed that the computer can do that. I'm amazed because I saved it on a little cassette and I can read it the next day and it's there. It's just so amazing. And my passion for the VIC-20 was very big. I had the expansion, memory expansion. I had, I had 19 kilobytes of RAM, wow. That is amazing. And um, basically, I start, you know, I get acquainted with magazines at the Compute Gazette and Compute Magazine and Ahoy. All these magazines are just so amazing because they have tons of programs that you just, you know, put in. And uh, I just love it. You know, my, every month I'm waiting for the magazine to arrive because I want to have more and more programs to do. Um, and basically, I just have a lot of fun with that, my Commodore VIC-20. But at a certain time, it gets to a point where the Commodore 64 gets very popular. And the VIC-20 
less and less we see programs and we see stuff. So uh, my next step up in computers is the Commodore 128. Now this thing I still have here and it still works. I sometimes plug it in on the TV to play Pac-Man. Gives you an idea. So I have a Commodore 128. That's my next step. We're in 1985, Christmas of 85. Uh, under the tree, there's this thing. And at, uh, I'm what, 14, 15, 15 years old, maybe. So this is under the tree, and I'm just so happy. And this is a step up. And then we have, you know, the external floppy drive. We have everything. And this really, really starts. Um, you know, I, I, there's a, a kind of a programming monitor inside it, uh, and I start learning machine language, and I start programming in machine language. Um, I wasn't very good at it, but I started programming stuff in machine language. I remember sending uh, Compute Gazette a Commodore 128 um, flight simulator, very basic flight simulator that I had done. Half of it was in basic, and half of it was in machine language, uh, because a machine language would accelerate the graphics of the um, you know, flight simulator game. And it was rejected, because it was horrible. <laughs> but uh, you know, that started a lot of interesting stuff. And um, I had tons of games. I had tons of uh, floppies. Um, you know, I probably had like six or seven hundred games uh, and uh, programs for the Commodore 128. Uh, I was really, really, really fond of it. And this, this followed me for a long time. The Commodore 128 was kind of the machine that followed me until my first PC, really. Um, and, you know, of course, in there, there is also uh, BBSs. Now this, for those that Remember, BBS or bulletin board systems, they look like this pretty much. We're in the 80s. I have a Commodore 128, and you go to these bulletin boards. And this is, I mean, the precursor of the Internet. This is the first way, the first time that you go online using a modem that plugs to your phone, and you go to these BBSs, and you leave messages because it's not online chat, direct online chat there. It's not like today. It's you leave a message and somebody replies afterwards. So uh, basically, I have a lot of fun, and this is really, really the start of online stuff. I really am really having a lot of fun. I'm, you know, very active. Uh, that we we do get-togethers and we get to you know different places. And uh, at some point, I'm 18 years old, and we go to bars and we have beers and we talk about you know our BBS stuff and uh, it's just fun. You learn, you know, you you um, meet tons of people of all sorts. But back then, that is still very, very local. You know, I mean, this is Montreal, and the people I meet are from Montreal. It's not. There's nothing international about it, not yet. Eventually, there's all sorts of new stuff that adds to the BBS that um, gives you access to content somewhere else and. You know, that's kind of part of the start of the Internet a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm having it from, you know, 85 to 92, 93. I am a major fan of BBSs or bulletin board systems. And at some point, I've got lists of, t you know, hundreds of them uh, that are available. And I'm having fun. And that's my first online stuff that I like doing, basically. Of course... Uh, Amiga 500 that I still have here, uh, dabbled a little bit with that. Atari ST, 1040 ST, still have it here, still works. Uh, dabble with it a little bit. And uh, then I become a PC guy. We're in 1990, 1991, and I get an 8286. It resembles pretty much like this. I put the monitor on top, had a floppy, five and a quarter inch floppy. And, uh, you know, I'm running, I don't know, I have uh, something uh, like one megabyte of RAM. I've upgraded to one megabyte of RAM, which is amazing for the time. And it costs a fortune. 
And this starts something that will send me towards my tech guy years because I open the top and I start noticing that you can change cards. Oh, the modem is a 1200 bone modem. I can change it for a 14.4K modem or 28.8 for those that know what I am talking about. These were the speeds of telephone modems back then. Oh, I can change the graphics card and have something better. Hey, I can add a hard drive because it didn't come with a hard drive. It had only the floppies. So now, hey, I've got a, what, something like a 40 megabyte hard drive. And I'm like, wow, 40 megabytes. What am I going to do with that? Today, we, I don't know. Today, even 40 gigabytes, you don't know what to do with that because there's just too small. And uh, so I continue on. I have an 8286. I start playing with that. And this, this gave me a lot of the basics of how PCs work, how computers work. Uh, of course, we're in DOS, maybe DOS 3.0 or something like that. Um, at the same time, I'm, uh, you know, I go to college and I learn about uh, science because my first college that I go to is uh, I go to uh, applied sciences. And then I get into another college where I learn electronics and um, computers, basically. So, um, you know, I'm dabbling with that, learning how it works, trial and error. Oh, why doesn't it work? Oh, I got to do a script to do something. Oh, really? I got to do that. And you got to do all sorts of weird things to access memory because you know back then you it's, it's just exceptional to have one megabyte of RAM so basically you have to tell the computer uh, how to access more than a megabyte of RAM by using extended memory so um, you know that's pretty much what's happening and you know it really makes me learn a lot because I learn about the electronics, I learn about the swapping of cards and uh, the way everything works in a PC and I change drives and I so you learn the basics with this and I really really learn the basics with this. So it's really cool and um, I stay in the DOS environment. Uh, I get an email because I'm still in the shortwave side because at the beginning I was telling you about radio. I do a, um, I write every month for a magazine about shortwave in 1992 and they give me an access to what is an email in 1992. So my first touch of internet is email and it's the only thing that I have. I have access to a phone number where I call, where I do something with an at symbol and write and send and it's instantaneous and I'm amazed because it's like, wow, I just sent the email, five minutes later he's already answering me. It's, I'm not used to that and the person's not here, the person's you know, in the United States and I'm like, wow. So that's my first dabble with email, and I'm in 1992. I mean, nobody really knows what you know the internet's going to be a big thing, and uh, I'm amazed. And I continue, and I you know use this a lot, but I don't have a lot of money. I'm basically really broke, so I'm broke, and I don't have cash to buy anything. So the computers I get back then are computers that people give me because I just don't have any money to buy anything. So uh, we continue on, and then I get from a friend of mine um, a computer that's a 486. A friend of mine buys something else. He gives me, uh, so what you saw before was a 286. He gives me a 486, uh, which is much more powerful and has a 80 gigabyte, uh, not gigabyte, but megabyte hard drive, and you know, it's really amazing. And it comes with Windows 3.1. And that's my first dabble into Windows. I now have Windows 3.1. I find that it's pretty cool environment. I learn how it works. 
oh, you got to put, but you know, Windows 3.1 has one thing that's very different from today is that even though it's a Windows operating system, Windows 3.1 is based on um, DOS. It works within DOS. It's a DOS program that gives you a Windows environment. So it's still very much DOS. And so you have parts of your life in DOS, parts of your life in Windows. When you want to launch Windows, you just type Win, W-I-N, it launches. But it gives me a lot of the basics of Windows, of how it works. And, you know, I, of course, install programs, buy hardware. Hardware doesn't work all the time. And because it doesn't work, you have to really go into the inner workings of the uh, operating system. And so this really, really gives me a lot of, um, of knowledge about Windows. And, uh, you know, I find it really cool, but it crashes a lot. Windows, Windows 3.1 did crash a lot back then. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much it there. But then comes Windows 95. Now, Windows 95 would run on really, really basic stuff. And I got a... I still got the, the, the Pentium 4, which is a DX4 100 or something like that. And, you know, Windows 95 works on it. It doesn't work really fast, but it works. And um, I remember having the 20, 23 or 25 three and a half inch discs because it came on CD-ROM edition, but I didn't have a CD-ROM back then. And you might think, well, what the hell? You didn't have a CD-ROM back then because the CD-ROM back then or a CD drive would cost like 400 bucks. It wouldn't cost 20 bucks like today. So I don't have 400 bucks. So I buy the edition that comes, comes with <laughs> 25 floppies. And you know, it takes like an amazing amount of time because you have to, okay, please insert floppy number two, oh, floppy number three and so on. And you have to install it with that. And I finally get Windows 95 and it's cool and it's really amazing. And it's the first Windows that starts to have its own operating side. It still does rely on the DOS side of it, but it's different from 3.1. And, you know, the craze of Windows 95 was that, was that for the first time on your PC, you had something that was amazingly, um, amazingly cool to run. And um, the first edition didn't have anything with the internet, but then they came out with editions like uh, 95A and B that had um, Internet Explorer because when 95 came out, <coughs> the internet was still not something big. And I would play and dabble with that. And uh, I'd play, you know, I'd, I'd be amazed at how all, all sorts of little things. And um, then I, you know, in there, I get an access of my first internet access, and we're in 96, about 96, and I get my first internet access with a very local internet service provider. It's modem, so it's telephone modem, so it's very slow. But you know what? Back then, the web pages are very small. Uh, where it takes time is that sometimes you transfer pictures and stuff, and it's like that, super long. But once again, that's, you know, I dabble with, continue playing with computers. It's uh, become a major passion for me. I, I, I go to work and uh, I come back home and I play with computers. And, you know, I get all sorts of jobs uh, where my skills of all different skills are required. And um, I'm starting at that time a little bit of helping people. I'm helping my friends. My friends like, oh, I don't know how this works or I don't know how this is gonna work. So I start helping my friends with their own computers. Those that have computers because a lot of them don't have computers back then still. And you know, I uh, play around and I'm like, uh, okay, well, you know, I think this is wrong and this is not, or oh, this string of characters is not correct or and I'm really, really getting a lot of knowledge of how about Windows, how it works and everything. I read a lot of books. You know, I, I go and I uh, go to the library or even purchase books, you know, about the 
the inner workings of Windows and uh, computers and try to learn more. Also, my electronic background does help in understanding a lot of the problems that a computer can have when it's at the basic computer electronics level. So, um, you know, we're uh, basically uh, into Windows 95, and uh, I use that. And, you know, of course, we upgrade to different windows and everything. And uh, I go to Windows 98. I go to Windows uh, Millennium, which is horrible. Windows Millennium is crashing all the time. Um, and when I'm Windows Millennium and my, I, I, I'm, I'm at my last job that I worked um, for a company, we're in uh, 99 or something like that. And uh, I've been there for a while and it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice job because I become like, uh, I be, I'm a boss there. You know, uh, at first I start, I, I get into the company and, you know, I learn how it works. And uh, two years after, you know, I, I know everything. So uh, the uh, the boss goes away and it's like, okay, Joel, you're going to be the, the, the boss. You're going to be the one that's going to show everybody. You're going to be the one that uh, controls everything. And um, and I like that because it uh, actually, I don't like it, you know, back then. I'm like, I don't want to be a boss and I don't want to show everybody everything. I don't feel like doing that. But it's a good thing because it gives me um the confidence the self confidence needed to to do something in life that's more than just being you know just a regular worker doing a regular job from 9 to 5 it opens me to the possibilities of you know hey i'm a, i'm good i'm good at what i do and when i do something i'm generally people like it and it really you know gives me the guts that i need because up to there, I don't have much guts. I, I'm more like, okay, I want to do my little job and leave me alone. Um, you know, I'm kind of the real geek guy that's like, you know, uh, okay, I'm going to, I love being with my friends, my geeky friends, but I don't want to, you know, do anything else. I just want to do my nine to five job and that's it. So that job I have to deal with. Uh, everybody, I have to deal with some of the clients. Uh, I have to deal with, with, with the big boss that, you know, wants everybody to work like crazy all the time. So it gives me really a care, the, 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 the force to, to, to be strong. And it's like, okay, I can do something with my life. You know, suddenly I'm, uh, you know, I'm 30 years old and I'm like, Hey, I can do something with my life. I can be someone and do something with my life. So I continue working there, but you know, I have this urge of, I want to start something. I want to start my own business. I want to do something with my life and be one of those guys that has a business and does stuff and people look at him and say, wow, this is cool. And, uh, <clears throat> I basically in 2000, um, go into the office of the big boss and say, look, I, I'm going to leave in three months. So I give them three months so they can find someone that could, you know, do the job and, uh, basically do something else. So, um, basically I, uh, do that three months later, no job. Pretty much nothing, <laughs> but a great idea that I want to be a tech guy. I want to be the computer guy. I want to be the tech guy. I want to help everybody with their computers. I think I can do something with that. So I start printing ads. I start printing these little paper ads, and I have my bag, and I go street and street, and I put them myself in the mailbox, and... Uh, I go to the grocery store. I go everywhere that I see that you can put an ad. I put an ad. I'm a tech guy. I'm a tech guy. And, uh, you know, it starts slowly. 
you start by having one or two clients then three or four and five and ten and twenty and then hundreds and uh, many many hundreds and people like you because you're nice and you've done you know the way that I've devised my job is also um, to to kind of not be the tech guy that knows it all and you better shut up and listen and more like the tech guy that okay I understand you're using this so I'm going to help you with this and that's that's probably one of the major things that I learned in life with uh, being a tech guy if you're using Internet Explorer I'm not there to say oh you should be using Chrome I think a tech guy that does that is a dumb tech guy I'm there to okay you're using Internet Explorer and unless it's really not what we need it's like okay well, here we're going to change this and that in Internet Explorer, and it should work better. And the people are happy because I'm just changing something that still makes them use that. So I'm very different from the average tech guy that goes in and says, No, nah, you're doing it wrong. That's not how we do it. Oh, why are you doing it like that? I said, No, that's not me. Me, it's you're doing it like that. Okay, well, you know how to do it. You know, I don't care if it takes this long for you to do something. The thing is, you know how to do it. That's all that matters to me. Oh, I know the shortcut that's this long. But you're okay with that, and I show you the shortcut, and tomorrow you're going to say, well, you told me something yesterday, and I don't remember. That's the knowledge of the tech guy with all the years of experience. Um, another thing that I notice is when I become a tech guy, I think I'm hot. I'm really good with computers and things are great. Wow, I'm really going to rock. But you learn in the first six months of going to real people's houses with real computer problems that basically you're no good. <laughs> and the first, the first year is rough because, and you know, I, at some point I'm a little uh, even in the mode of, man, should I, maybe I should quit. I'm no good because people call me and they're like all messed, messed up, messed up, and they just don't understand. And they're like, well, you showed me something and I don't know what to do. And it's like, okay, I'm no good. I'm a no good tech guy. But that's the first year of being a tech guy. Um, I sit down at some point and I'm like, okay, um, here it goes. What's wrong with what I do? Well, the first rule, and I already told it, is, okay, I'm not there to change. So if you're listening to your music with media player, I'm not there to say, oh, there's a better player than that. Yes, I know there's a better player than that. But the lady knows how to use media player. So help her with media player, learn media player, learn these things more in depth so that you can actually explain it well and explain how to do everything with all the things that people use every day. That greatly helps because it, um, it stops the, the calls of the people saying, uh, well, I don't know what, you know, I don't remember what you showed me last week and you have to come back and show me again. And of course they paid to show to, for you to show them. You're not going to ask them to pay twice to show the same thing. You're like, okay, I'm going to show you again. But then you learn that, okay, I, I'm doing it wrong. That's not how it does. I'm not there to change what you do. I'm here to help you not to change what you do. And how you do it. If that's the way you do it and it works, and that's it. So all of that and, you know, the slow start and the little, you know, mind where you're like, well, I think I'm, you know, I'm not sure finally. Should I? Should I or not do it? Or, But you get these great, great, great people in there. You know, um, that's another side of it. I understand that not only do I go to places and meet people everywhere in their homes, I understand 
that I communicate with people really well. And people love me and people say like, wow, you're, you know, you're not only a, a good tech guy, you're, 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 you're fun and you're like, you know, it's almost like you're my friends. You know, some of my clients would, you know, call me and say, hey, I'm having a barbecue Sunday. Uh, why don't you come over? <laughs> you know, and uh, so th there's a mix of things that works really well. And with the, with some really great clients that I have in there also, it's like, wow, it's cool. It's um, we're having um, I'm more and more having fun. And uh, my tech guy years are really, really cool, you know. So uh, I do that, you know, and I, I still do some tech guy stuff, but I do less tech guy stuff than I used to. Uh, because what happens is, um, you know, as we're coming through my, my story, you'll see a little why. But I still do. I still do tech guy stuff. I still have clients that I go to and fix computers. Uh, it's still part of my, uh, my life. But, uh, you know, so I'm 16 years now into doing that. And um, at the peak where I would really, really want to be the tech guy, uh, I mean, I would have clients every day and I would have really incredible week, weeks of work because there would be like, I'd have so many people wanting me to be their tech guy. And, you know, I think that's the reward of being a good tech guy is that you uh, actually get popular and people talk about you and it's like, well, he's the tech guy. He's the guy that you really want to uh, really, really have basically. That's for sure. So, uh, now as I go to, and by the way, if you want to send me questions, I'm going to answer all the questions that I see uh, in the email help with my computers at gmail.com the same email from the tech show uh, this is exceptional tonight because I don't usually answer questions but um, you know that's if you have anything maybe you're, you know want to have more information about knowledge or a question about me a question about tech guy about whatever so 16 years into being a tech guy and uh, come across something. Well, a little less than 16, because 16 years of a tech guy is now. But, um, you know, YouTube is that big place where people put the videos. And I'm like uh, dabbling a little bit with it. Because at first, YouTube is only you put the videos and that's it. And people might watch you, and you know. So I did start, I do start a channel. I start a channel of radio because once again, shortwave radio is one of my big passions. And one of the first videos, the first channel that I want to do is, hey, I want to share videos of shortwave radio. So um, I look at YouTube and it's like, hey, I'm going to open a channel and I'm going to do uh, some radio videos. And we're, I guess, 2010, maybe, uh, about 2010. About a year, a year and a half later, like 2012 or something, um, or 11, I get this email, and the email, the email comes from YouTube and says, hey, um, you know, we're happy to say that monetization is available on your channel. And at first, I'm like, monetization, what is that? And I click and I start reading and it's like, hey, you can make money with your videos. And I'm like, really? I can make money with my videos? That's interesting. Okay. And I start posting, uh, you know, I, I, I get my AdSense account and I, I uh, activate monetization in YouTube and I start posting many, many, many radio videos because I'm like, okay, I'm going to do radio videos. And I still don't have an idea of doing computer videos for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I'm really, I'm going to do radio videos. Maybe I'm going to make some money with that. And, you know, to, so I do radio videos and they rack in a little bit of money, but it's like, you know, kind of ridiculous. 
uh, you know, pays a pizza every week, maybe. <laughs> so uh, I start doing, you know, some some minding here. I'm like, okay, I like doing videos. And I see that some people make a lot of money with videos. How can I do videos and make maybe a living with videos? But we're really far from that at that point. And I'm still, a, I'm still not there. Um, so basically, I start thinking about channels that I'm going to do and all sorts of uh, okay, ideas. Oh, man, what, what, what can I do that would make money that people would like to see? And I do a lot of stuff, but the first real big hit that I get is when Windows 8 comes out. Because I immediately have an idea of, hey, I can do a Windows 8 channel to help people understand this operating system that is just so new and so different that people are going to be lost. And that Windows 8 channel, um, you know, all the channels I did before would start slowly like this and start progressing like this. The Windows 8 channel did this. And it was like, wow, I'm getting hundreds and thousands of views suddenly. And it doesn't really take a lot of time for me to, to achieve it. So I'm like, okay, okay, I found something here. And you know, now with you know Windows 10 and everything. So I continue on and I'm increasing the revenue stream from YouTube. And um at some point about a year ago, I decided that, okay, stop advertising the tech guy thing, which will lower the number of people that call me for tech jobs. I'm going to keep the clients that I already have. And basically, I'm going to try to make a living off of YouTube. I want to try that. And that's my basic idea. And it, it still is, by the way. Uh, going into making a living. I'm not there yet. I'm okay. You know, I mean, probably a lot of people would be happy to 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 do what I do with YouTube. Uh, and by the way, I'm not mentioning any numbers because YouTube uh, agreement prevents you from talking about the amounts of money you make with monetization. Now, there's up and downs with YouTube. Uh, the first down that I get is about a year into my YouTube, where I'm starting to get monthly income, and we're in 2012 or 13, maybe. Um, my AdSense account gets blocked, and they say that there's illegal click activity. And I'm like, what? And suddenly, my little bits of money that was coming in every month stops coming in. I'm like, what the hell happened here? And you don't know. You know, <laughs> with the problems I have now, you don't really know nothing. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it didn't change because back then I didn't know. And when they gave, you know, it took three months and suddenly monetization came back. And I had no idea. Nobody ever told me why. And if there was illegal click activity, I can tell you one thing. They gave me all the money that they owed me. So it means that what the hell happened? So that was my first downturn. And I was really, really pissed off because it was like, man, maybe I could do something with this and slap in the face. And I continue and it grows and it grows and it grows. And I'm happy and happy and happy and happy and happy. And second slap in the face, my other Windows channel that uh, a lot of you know gets, uh, you know, removed. Uh, and it's still off. And uh, the more I wait, the more I think it's going to stay like that. And I'm really, really pissed. And you have no information and you don't know nothing and don't know why. It just is a brief thing that says, oh, for this reason. Yeah, who, why? Can I just talk to someone? Can I change something to make it better? 
that's a big flaw in YouTube. And uh, it really needs to change because I, I don't think that the future of YouTube is really bright because of that. Another thing that's problematic with YouTube is uh, AdSense revenue really going down, down, down the drain all the time. Um, without mentioning numbers, I can tell you that YouTube monetization, I've, you know, in the past two years, I have four times more views than two years ago. Okay. I quadrupled my views and the money stayed the same. Interesting, no? Because it's not, the ads are not as interesting and as good as it was before. Well, AdSense has a flaw there too. There's a, a problem of monetization. That could be a big problem with YouTube eventually also. So um, anyways, I am still, I am still right now because of the fact that I have a nice audience. Uh, you know, when I do things, I notice that I have a big audience and it's something that's cool. And uh, I have a loyal audience that wants to follow me everywhere. Uh, not just on my Windows channel, but on my shortwave radio channel, on a few other channels that I have also. So, you know what? I still want to continue and I want to try to make and earn a living for another reason also. You know, I am going to be 47 years old in a couple of weeks. And uh, that means that, uh, you know, I'm getting older slowly. Even though 47 is still not old, it also tells me, well, you know what? If you can make a living from home doing stuff instead of going everywhere as a tech guy and working hard, and it's still working hard, but it's not working hard in the same manner, that could be interesting. But with all that's happening, uh, not only do I have some kind of insecurity here, but I do have also the fact that I'm okay. So anybody tomorrow can stop everything. What? I don't like that. I don't like the way that it works. So that's when I add a few new things now. Daily motion. Daily motion. Um, a few of you mentioned daily motion to me when I uh, was like pissed off at uh, the channel being closed down. And I started looking at daily motion and you know what? Daily motion is interesting. It's interesting because it's different than YouTube. It's not like YouTube. It's really um, a little different in the way that it works and then the way that it, they uh, do things. And also uh, daily motion has, and is the only other platform where videos can be monetized. You can make money on daily motion with monetization. And so, I've started doing stuff on daily motion with the windows channel. So all the windows videos I post on daily motion also, and uh, I will be opening other channels on daily motion of different subjects. The drawback of daily motion is that there are daily limits of things. You cannot upload more than two hours of videos a day. So it means if you're, doing eight videos and their last, the, the, the total amount of time is three hours. You cannot do that on daily motion. You can on YouTube, on YouTube, you could stuff YouTube with videos as you want, and it's going to go there on daily motion. They have a maximum allowable of two hours every day. Um, so it's a little more limited, but it's when I look at what I do, I rarely, you know, Except for the live shows, I rarely go more than two hours anyway. So, um, you know, it's something to try. And uh, after what, a little less than a week now that I'm on daily motion, I've already seen my first pennies because they are pennies, <laughs> but uh, monetization has started kicking in. And, you know, I don't have a lot of viewers or anything, but it's, you know, uh, it's there. And if you want to join in on my daily motion stuff, it's dailymotion.com slash learn windows. And you'll be on my page and you'll see that the same videos I post on YouTube's uh, windows channel are on daily motion, except for the live shows. 
So I'm here, there, and that's pretty much what I'm doing. And the future, what's the future? You know what, I'm at a point where I am thrilled and scared at the same time. Uh, the future, with what happened, you know what, um, and with the AdSense monetization being lower and lower, uh, what I thought was an interesting future for me uh, suddenly becomes kind of a scary future for me. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm at the point right now or, or where I'm trying, I'm taking decisions for my future with what happens here. Um, you might, you know, for those that noticed, I, of course, asked for donations and I'm, you know, I don't like asking for money. It's like, I, I feel like a beggar, but you know what? Uh, if I, I understand one thing is that part of my future might reside not only on monetization from that, but on other revenue streams from what I do. Uh, one of the things that I want to check is, of course, having um, maybe companies uh, join in and, you know, I'd have that little two minute bit where I say it's like, this show is, you know, made possible by HP. Buy an HP computer and get $50 back if you just enter, learn Windows, you know, something like that. And, you know, I could get maybe a little, a little something out of that. Um, I'm checking at revenue streams that include my fans, you know, uh, I don't like asking for money, like I said, but some people might have, you know, some people that enjoy what I do might have a little bit of money to spare. And uh, because they like it, they might, you know, and uh, that that's cool. I also understand and, uh, you know, one of the things in my future also that I want to talk about here is I don't want to. I don't want, don't want to do what I do now and have to charge anyone. I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to block content because of the fact that um, you don't have the money to pay to view my video or my channel or my, you know, on daily motion, there's one thing that's like, oh, if you, want you can put your video online and have people pay to watch it um i don't want that i don't want to use that type of uh, monetization because i don't want to block anyone from the possibility of viewing what i do i want everyone to see what i do and because you know i understand and myself having been really poor and having no money at some point in my life. Um, I understand that we don't all have the money to pay for something. And uh, I believe in the free side of the internet, you know, and giving content. Um, one thing, of course, that I always tell everybody, if you're using an ad block, uh, please consider removing the ad block when you visit my channel, when you visit anything that I'm involved in, so that at least there's a possibility of monetization. You know, ad blockers are the nightmare of content providers like me because it means that people will block ads and that we won't get revenue for everything we do. And people don't realize that, okay, but someday maybe Jill is not going to be here anymore, giving you tech tips and telling you there's updates and helping you if there's something wrong because you couldn't make a living out of it. Uh, it's a very complex issue. And um, I understand that. A lot of people use ad blocks because, you know, well, I'll give an example and a perfect example of that. Uh, Computerworld.com. You know, I read tech news all day because 
I want to give you the news bulletin. So uh, every day I read all sorts of tech news everywhere. But one of the most annoying websites that I've known is <laughs> computerworld.com. These big ads that pop up and everything. And you know what? When I go to that website, I understand, really understand why people use ad blocks. The problem is that ad blocks also will um, be a problem for content providers that are more of in the regular type of user. So, you know, anyways, the future also brings new shows for me. Uh, I am in the works of something that will be called From the Couch, From the Couch, because right there, and you don't see it, it's a nice big couch. And I want to have some kind of weekly or, you know, I'm crazy enough to think of maybe some kind of daily show where I'm going to talk about a hot subject of the day, something that I see in the news is like, oh, wow, we got to talk about this. Uh, that will probably be my next show that I will be doing live. And um, it will be on its own channel. And that channel, by the way, will have only live, live stuff. Um, everything on the channel that I would do on that channel will be live shows only. And it will be from the couch. And it would be like a five days a week show, Monday to Friday. And we talk about a different subject. And uh, so that's something I'm thinking about. Probably for the first few shows or the first time, I would do it once a week. But uh, if things go well, you know, it can become like a daily show. That could be cool. Um, I have lots of ideas of shows that I want to do. You know, I'd uh, gladly wake up in the morning and think, okay, Every day is a live show day and do live shows all the time. I, I can see myself doing that because I love what I do with this. And I love you guys. You guys have been great. You know, the only reason I still continue doing this is because there's so many people watching that are incredible and that give me that little something that sometimes, you know, I wake up in the morning. It happens. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, Okay, uh, monetization's down. Um, somebody slapped my channel. God, do I really want to continue? And you're, you're sitting there and you're looking at your computers and your stuff and you're like, do I really want to continue going, doing something, going on with this? And it is sometimes difficult to continue on some you know, some days when you get slapped in the face, but I'm a fighter and um, I want to fight. I want to do something. I want to be there and I want to, I want to try to be there and be there for everybody as, as, as possible, you know, and try to help everybody with tech stuff. So it's really cool. And that's the future. And I'm, you know, I'll be there. I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here next week. I'll be here in two weeks. I can guarantee. Uh, and let's hope the future means I'm going to be there even more, maybe have even more fun and have even more uh, positive outlook and new shows and just have a lot of fun together. Let's uh, check the email because uh, some people have sent me emails. Um, okay, I have George. Uh, George this says, you know what? I love all the shows that you do. I watch everything that you do. I'm also on your Windows channel and your radio channel. I watch your live radio shows that are amazing. I love your Tuesday shows. I wish you would have shows every day. Uh, I just adore watching your style. You're a down to earth guy, and that also helps in making these shows so real and so interesting. Um, thank you for everything you do. And um, the question that I have for you is um, if YouTube would take down all of your channels, 
will you still have the courage to continue uh, with the shows? <laughs> That's a good one because if YouTube would take down everything that I do, uh, man, that'd be hard. That'd be hard because it uh, would remove all the revenue. You know, if YouTube tears down everything I do, I just basically have no more revenue from what I do here. Daily Motion is like, you know, I mean, not even a dollar in four days. I would probably, um, you know, I'd put back ads to have more clients and do my tech guy stuff. And, uh, you know, at least I have the possibilities. You know, it's not like everything is down. I have no more money as I, I just put more ads and I have, you know, I do tech guy stuff. But, of course, it'd be a big blow. And, you know, it'd be sad not just for me. It'd be sad for me for sure. But from what I see when I look at all the people in the, 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 uh, the live stream and the shows that I do, it would be sad for everybody that watches my shows. That's for sure. Tim Robinson. Hey, Jill, thank you for the great shows. Very interesting to watch. Is there anything out there that is tech that actually learns? I'm not talking about program learning like Cortana. CPUs have instruction sets that can make them seem like they are learning. Is there any tech that truly learns? Uh, you know what? We're getting close to what we call uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, that's, that's a very close future. I did see a um, TV program about a month ago that, talked, that, uh, that was talking about artificial intelligence explaining that in about 20 years, uh, robots that repair themselves, robots that learn pretty much anything, uh, they were even showing a possible call center where you call in and there are no more humans there answering the phones. Completely automated with computers. Uh, there is a lot coming and I, you know what? It's almost scary. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. I find it real cool, but I'm scared of that future because we're going to give more and more control to machines. You know what? One of the things that I said to a friend of mine uh, when we were having a few beers at a bar, we're talking about how movies 50 years ago, a lot of the high-tech stuff you see in the movies 50 years ago are here today and I said to my friend what prevents Terminator that's 20 years old from being reality and for another 30 years is going to be like 50 years and uh, so what's gonna you know what prevents that scary when you think about it for sure uh, Frank says, I love your shows. It's just so fantastic that you have all this knowledge to share with us. And I really want to support you. I am on Daily Motion also. I have been following you now on Daily Motion. And of course, if something happens, I will continue following you there. Um, don't forget that there are some um, ways of being monetized, like Patreon and many others to help you uh, in your quest. And he says, please don't stop because it's really, really uh, important for a lot of people, I think, everything you do. So uh, thanks for what you do and please don't stop. I'd be very sad to see you go. Oh man, this is, you know, this is why you continue on. This is why we continue on. Uh, I've got another one here from uh, Susan, Susan in California that I know a lot because Susan first started watching me in the uh, shortwave channel where I do radio stuff. 
Uh, hello, Jill. Everything you do is amazing. Your live shows are fantastic. And your idea about the show of um, From the Couch is really, really great. I am a retired old woman. And one thing that I know is I'd be hooked to my computer screen to watch that show every day for sure. Please consider doing it. I think it will be really interesting. And don't stop. You can do much more if you want to. Thank you, Susan. Nice to have you. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, just check it out here. Okay, and we have our last one here. Tim Robinson, uh, we are with you. We all love your shows and will follow you to the end of the earth. <laughs> uh, man, even the to daily motion. Don't be ashamed of asking for donations. You supply a video feed that is worthy of being paid for it. Bear with me, buddy. I got a donation coming soon. You know, just one little thing here. I, I, I talk about donations and everything, but please, please. I understand that some people don't have the money to do it and don't. Don't go crazy on donations, you know, if you can't. I understand that pe people sometimes can't, but uh, thank you if you do. It's, it's, it's very, very, uh, very happy. I know you're going to tell me not to worry about it. <laughs> I haven't read that sentence. You see, he knows me. The guy knows me pretty much. But you got something coming soon, I hope. As for ads, I always let them play through the entirety. I hope it helps, buddy. Very best wishes, my friend. Yeah, well, you know, don't one one thing that I just want to uh, tell here is don't you know don't let ads play just for ads play. Uh, first of all, I'm not allowed to ask anyone to watch ads, uh, and you know uh, what I mean by that is I don't want everybody to watch an ad that's boring because they just want to make sure I get money for monetization. Uh, well, you know, I, I'd rather have people watch an ad because it's interesting. One of the biggest problems with ads that I see, because when I watch other videos and other channels, I see that a lot of the ads on YouTube are really, really bad. They're not made for the idea that you're on YouTube. You don't want a two minute ad for a five minute video. Uh, I think they have to understand that ads on YouTube should be 15 seconds maximum that's the ads and that should be the only ads 15 seconds not two minutes that's way too much so hey take care everyone see you next week we're gonna of course answer your questions 3 p.m for learn for the uh answers your your questions my answers 3 p.m uh eastern time 20 hundred hours utc and um learn the tech Next week, we're going to have um, the subject will be what should have been this week. <clears throat> How does, you know, a computer work from start when you press that power button? What happens in there? What is the insides of a computer? What does it do? How does it work? All of it. That's what we're going to check next week. And we're not going to have this TV next week. You're going to be surprised. We're going to be somewhere else. And we'll be watching the insides of a machine, how it works. And I'll be explaining from the start to when you see Windows, how everything stacks up for, for that computer to work and show you that. So that's next week. Take care, everyone. Nice to have you on board. And thank you for being such great fans. Bye.